Joe, and I'm here with Jamie, the lead battle designer for the Total War series. Obviously, extremely excited to talk to you in particular because uh, obviously battles are one of my favorite part of the of uh, Total War. So first, uh, I guess let's jump right in. Tell us how you've improved the combat, maybe the interface and the AI in the uh, the battle area. <laughs> okay, that's a lot of questions to yeah, answer yeah. right there. Um, I think you know, safe thing to say is we've had a complete overhaul of the entire battle engine, including the actual combat mechanics themselves. Uh, they're a lot more detailed, and they also take into account a lot more things that you know involve how the, the combat is actually resolved. Also with the animations themselves in terms of chaining of those animations, the way the combat looks, it's a lot more visceral and actually a lot more kind of feeling of mass and impact going on in there. And you did uh, the motion cap, you know, yeah. have you all guys continued that? Yeah, we've got, we've now got one of the biggest mocap uh, studios in, in Europe in terms of, you know, capturing stuff for gameplay. Um, we're using that to its fullest possible effect. Um, again, with the graphics engine, we've done a complete overhaul of the way that the graphics engine works and that kind of you know, trickles down from the campaign map right down to the battlefield. Um, there are just so many different areas of the game. You know, I could carry on talking and talking about it. <laughs> There's, you know, so basically, it, it breaks down to there are two fan types, in, in my opinion, of the Total War series. You've got your historical guys that will freak out if you don't get the sandals exactly right, you yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Right, yeah. The Total War guys, and then you've got, you know, the other guys that really just want a visceral battle experience, just feel like a badass general and stuff. So, yeah. are you still making sure that you're staying true? Because that's what you guys do best, you know, the historical context, you know, having a historical flavor and trying to be accurate. Is that still very important to you guys? And what have you been doing yeah. uh, in order to show it off in Rome? Well, for example, uh, we have over 700 different types of units in the, uh, in the battlefield. Wow, that's uh, much bigger than Shogun. Too. Oh, way, way, way bigger. And that's because we're actually trying to represent all the different types of combat and all the different types of fighting that existed in the ancient world. So we've got ancient Egyptians, you know, and when I say ancient Egyptians, I'm talking first century, you know, kind of second century BC, not the guys from, you know, maybe 2,000 years before that. Um, also, uh, you know, like the, the, the entire kind of development of the Roman army and how it developed. So, you know, we're going from kind of pre-Marian kind of forces right up to the kind of principate in terms of the actual kind of look and feel of those the, those units. Um, also, in terms of the way that those units fight, it's far more accurate than anything we did for Rome 1. Um, the, we've also weapons uh, all, the all the weapons and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, beyond that, we're also bringing in naval battles into the combat now. Yes. I did see that. I saw that in a demo. It was basically a hybrid land and naval battle. You're controlling them at the same time. Uh, could you tell us about that? Well, basically, what we wanted to do was actually bring together, you know, ships and the, the land forces together at the same time in a battle. And, you know, we've made it pretty easy to understand. All the control mechanisms are pretty much what you would expect from a land battle that you had played in any previous Total War game. And with that, you know, it creates so many different opportunities. You can kind of go go end around somebody and, you know, come in from behind without them realizing what's going on because you're using a river, you know, to get in behind the, behind the enemy. Um, also, you know, for example, you may kind of like have some forces just positioned carefully out of sight of the enemy that are on, on some ships and when they come, come in to attack you then you can bring them in as reinforcements yeah, yeah. you know so you can do that quarterback sack on them. And, and when I was playing the demo I wanted to see if I could just just you know power my way through I took all my ships and I actually rammed the enemy and yeah. the rams in the game are much Im more impressive there's you know uh, destruction you see the decks and it's awesome it's just really good yeah. so uh, how, how is that going to be balanced though I'm going to just ram all my ships into your ships? Yeah. Um, well, actually, no. We're, the, the thing is that we've actually made that there's a, there's this proper stone paper scissors going on yeah. in there. Um, the, you know, the bigger ships are a lot more cumbersome. They're very much harder to turn, but they're the ones that are most likely to cause you know ramming uh, to sink a ship. Whereas the much smaller ships have got a you know a lot of problems with actually trying to cause ramming damage to other enemy vessels. So you get a lot of different balances going it's, on there. It'd be hard to catch a, a smaller quick ship with your big ship to try to ram it down while yeah. they're basically you know guiding you the whole time, circling you and be, you know getting you down. All right, sweet. So you have all those kind of things like you do on the land battles where you try and pin a force and then that allows you to get your heavies in there and really hit them hard. You know, and again, with the actual combat itself in terms of land battles, you know, the things that we're doing, we're actually trying to kind of create this feeling of kind of, you know, really kind of, you know, 
realistic combat, but at the same time something that you know is very satisfying to the player that they can see the results of their actions. You know, and that includes special abilities. It also includes things like, for example, as you know, the units you know gain experience. We show that kind of experience gain so the player can see all of those things. So you know, I think we're kind of appealing to both sides of the coin, if you know what I mean. The, the hardcore historian buffs they'll see all the kind of you know units that they're looking for, and at the same time, you know, people who just want to kind of like ram in, you know, kind of with their kind of you know chariots into the into the enemy or you know let loose their elephants so you know on those legions they can do it yeah yeah and one thing that i saw that might please both sides is uh, a new uh banner raising uh or, or yeah. um could you explain a little bit more about that i didn't raise quite the banner. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay uh raise the banner like specific legions and their history all oh, right okay if you're talking about the um the, the, the history tradition. on the camp the traditions on the yeah, campaign yeah. map Okay, the traditions on the campaign map, uh, basically what this does is it allows uh, armies to gain experience, not just the individual units. And what that does is it means that, for example, you know, in the same way that maybe, for example, the 101st Airborne Division, everybody knows they're, they're real badasses. And, you know, we want to do the same thing, you know, and there really was the same thing going on with the ancient Roman legions. You know, some of these legions were around for two, three hundred years. Oh, yeah, if you know history, like yeah, the 13th yeah. Legion. Or exactly, like that, exactly. Yeah. And, and all of those things mean that, you know, they have a reputation that they carry around with them. And that has an effect on gameplay. So, you know, these guys might be kind of really, really good kind of heavy infantry or they might be uh, really good siege uh, kind of, you know, takers, people who can actually, you know, build really good siege weapons and actually smash down those walls. So they get buffs for that being that particular banner. Now, what happens if your awesome army that you've been cultivating, this legion, gets wiped out? Well, uh, as long as you recover those uh, eagles, then you know you can carry on. You can just raise some more troops, and they'll carry on with those traditions. Carry with the same yes. traditions, yeah. just like in uh, the real life with the 100 and the airborne, yeah, exactly. they carry on the same traditions years after years. That's yeah. awesome. Now, let's talk a little bit about the campaign map. What have you improved on the campaign map? Is uh, has anything been added to make it feel more alive or, or dynamic? Absolutely. I mean, obviously, you know, the, the first thing that you'll notice is that the actual environment is so much more realistic than it's ever been previously. Our Rivers are so much more, you know, alive. Uh, you'll actually see kind of fish walk, you know, in the, in the sea, and you'll actually see elephants walking around on the in the environment. Uh, and uh, you know, kind of, you know, you could, th these things will give you clues as to what's actually going to go on there and what you can actually get out of that region. So, for example, if you see elephants, that might be a good place to raise elephant units. You see camels, that's obviously camel units. Horses again, cavalry. You'll actually see that though all of those things are clues as to the value of that region. Uh, you know, the same thing also goes with things like, um, you know, uh, the ancient buildings that, you know, existed in the ancient world, all, all the seven wonders. So, for example, the, the pyramids and, you know, the lighthouse of Pharos. And what that does is all of those things give you extra, extra bonuses in terms of campaign, the campaign map. We've also exposed some of the uh, artificial intelligence's thinking in terms of things like, for example, uh, diplomacy. When you look at it... When, when you Improve look, Mr. Diplomacy. Yeah, yeah. You know, what goes on there with diplomacy is that, you know, for example, we now actually tell the player a few of the things, not everything, about what's going on in the, the AI's head, what it's thinking, why it won't take that, that offer, you know, and all of those things are something that, you know, allow the player to then start thinking about what they're doing and what, how that's affecting their enemies and how that's affecting their allies. And I saw, I saw a new d dynamic that basically you can expand your cities and you will you can see your cities grow and then yeah, you yeah. see like the individual little houses on the outside I thought that was pretty awesome but let's talk about one more thing like little concerns from previous games sure. uh, you know we're talking you know the bugs and glitches with the AI we're concerned you know naval battles haven't always or rather naval invasions haven't always been the best in Napoleon and Empire yeah. and then it was less of a concern in um, Shogun because we're on an island but uh, in Rome Total War too you can send you know complete armies across the so is the AI gonna be able to handle uh, naval invasions and what improvements specifically like if you can name one problem that you guys have fixed you know that, that well, I mean you know I think as you said with Shogun 2, we, we, we actually improved things quite a lot and we've just carried on with that and the way that we've actually improved the pathfinding on the campaign map has led to a, a much more dynamic uh, artificial intelligence. It, it's understanding of what's going on around it is that much more clear. You know, so far in the early stages of development we are at the moment where we haven't quite got the balancing right. We've actually had some problems with the AI actually defeating us. So, you know, yeah, it's yeah, that's, that's a good problem to, have, though, to make it hard. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, you know, we're, we're having to kind of tweak and twist on some of those things. Um, also, in terms of the actual way that the, um, the, 
sorry, that's very loud. <laughs> um, so in some, in some of the ways that uh, uh, the units move around on the campaign map, we've actually improved things for both the player and for the AI. So for example, when you send an army across the sea, you no longer have to kind of build a whole fleet, get it ready and then move your ship, men onto the ship and then move it across. Okay, so so you, now what you do is you just move your army straight onto the water. Perfect, so you don't take a stack and then put it on a ship and then move that stack. Instead, the stack moves across the water, turns into a ship, so that then makes yeah. it easier for the AI to then do that themselves. Yeah, it, it, it means that, you know, the, you know it, it was a difficult thing for even human players to, to actually do is coordinate all of those elements and get the logistics quite right. Um, and this way, you know, there's a definite downside to all of this because obviously uh, the, the the way that uh, 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 transport ships work is that they're actually a lot weaker than normal ships. So if you actually get caught by somebody who's got some war fleets around, you know, some war galleys, then you're in a big, big trouble. We've got agents now that have, have a lot more kind of different varieties of actions that they can carry out against uh, the players' armies. They can sabotage them. Um, you know, I think. For anybody that's um, you know not played a Total War game since Rome One, their their minds are going to be blown. The thing is just so much more different than oh, siege. An yeah. Oh yeah, and then siege. Uh, we got to talk about siege okay, warfare. Siege. So because that's big. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, with siege warfare, we've completely overhauled the way that works. We now have like more than one um, capture point that exists within a city, and the point is that that means you have to actually defend more than one place at a time, and that really kind of like changes things, especially with the line of sight system that we've got. That means that, for example. You know, you can't necessarily see what's going on inside the city. You don't know where the enemy troops are. And that creates a lot more kind of, uh, you know, hide and seek in terms of, you know, trying trying to find the enemy. And it also results in a lot more kind of flanking maneuvers and things that you would not, not normally have got in a Total War game. And also gets rid of that central plaza with just putting all your units in the center and just waiting for the enemy to come at you. That's not something you can do anymore. And especially now that we have walls that you can knock down the entire outside of the walls of a city yeah. and you don't just have like little sections with sections some you, have to, yeah. you, you can actually just obliterate an entire wall section that's cool, yeah. that's cool. now and uh, let's talk a little bit about multiplayer like the Shogun Total War is there is there any new multiplayer modes is there a co-op mode is there you know a player we've had a look at the you know the way that people are playing uh, uh, multiplayer and the, we, we think we've got some pleasant surprises for some people you know some stuff that they've been asking for we're not going to really talk too much about that at the moment but okay. do they do you carry over the same general system where you can customize your army and all that stuff I can't talk about any of that at the moment so. okay well that's cool well go ahead and tell us uh, maybe uh, when the game is expected to release and uh, you know what systems it'll be for obviously PC but uh, it's obviously Obviously, uh, full PC and September the 3rd, and uh, if you pre-order, you get three bonus factions. Okay, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about uh, Total War. Very excited to see it, and uh, definitely, and we'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show.